Guess who's back in the house? Here's click clack in the bow. I hope that you guys are having an amazing day. There were a lot of headlines that I wanted to talk about in this particular video. One of those headlines was yesterday it came out that Billy D. Williams was interviewed by Esquire magazine and he talked about how he really feels in touch with not only his masculine side, but his feminine side. And people in the media felt as if he was coming out as gender fluid. And so after learning about this, he commented that he didn't know exactly what gender fluid meant, but he wasn't coming out as gay what he was saying that he really doesn't try to play down his feminine side but he embraces it and I thought that was really he's he's 82 so I thought it was kind of like interesting for this kind of like 82 year old man to come out and say that I haven't read the full interview, so I'm not sure um, the context of the answer, but it reminded me of comments that Flame Monroe, uh, the transgender comedian who was on the stand-up show She Ready, that was presented by Tiffany Haddish for Netflix. And Flame had come under fire for her interview on The Breakfast Club. And so one of the things that she stated that she received a lot of heat for was her phrase, he, she, we. And actually, um, she stated that the transgender community was coming after her on social media for that particular comment and how the transgender community and the gay community felt that they were, that Flame was labeling trans women, he, she, we. And Flame stated that, no, that's a phrase that I call myself and myself alone. Flame also stated that the trans community felt as if Flame was really feeding into the straight community's feelings regarding how trans women should be labeled that trans women should not be grouped with cisgender biological women, that transgender women specifically, because trans men are never included in the debate about being transgender, and so that trans women should be in their own separate category. And so after hearing Flame in her own words, my feelings about the interview changed. I, it was difficult to watch the interview because of the previous interview that they had with transgender individuals on The Breakfast Club and how I felt that the when Malik Yoba was on The Breakfast Club with a representative from the National Black Justice Coalition as well as Carmen Carrera the individual who worked for the National Black Justice Coalition made a comment about being assigned a gender at birth is not natural and how that caused an uproar in the straight community. But I, I felt then and I still felt now that 
the woman that made that comment that she wasn't able to finish her thought and had she been able to finish her thought she would have been able to explain what she meant and so with that interview and then with flames interview i felt as if that the breakfast club really needed to have a representative of the trans community who can really break down what it feels like to be a transgender person in the black community because there are a number of the breakfast club listeners who do not understand what it means to be trans and i think the easiest way for the breakfast club listeners to really learn what it is to be trans they really need to understand one thing that transgender people are human point blank period and that as humans we all have certain needs wants desires and if they can eliminate the idea of what a trans person not necessarily eliminate but put it aside for a moment and really look at transgender people on a human level. I would love to see that conversation happen on The Breakfast Club to humanize transgender people. But also with Flame's interview, there were some things that I thought she could have said differently to really explain herself and her experience as a transgender woman. And Flame does ad identify as trans, but then I realized that Flame is a comedian and comedians often deal with very harsh realities, but to say them in a way that people in the audience or people at home can really understand their experience and there is a, a shared experience is created. And so I really think the reason why Flame experienced so much heat is because she was going against what she was going against the trans narrative and because now she has this platform that people hold the leaders, the role models to a certain standard and she was going against the trans narrative because there are so few black trans women in the media and because of that what she was saying was is the complete opposite of what other trans black women say in a setting that that she was in on the breakfast club and so my thoughts changed because i realized she's a comedian and what happened with kathy griffin and how with one tweet President Trump really destroyed her career. And then with following tweets from President Trump's children, she lost gigs, she lost money, and she's been able to come back with having an international tour and a documentary explaining her experience, but she will never be able to get back to where she previously was she was fired from hosting 
the New Year's Eve countdown with Anderson Cooper. That is a huge, that is a huge gig. And so we really have to protect comedians because I feel like comedians have really been attacked under, attacked under President Trump's time in office. And also, I believe that however a person identifies, we should respect that. And I think that flame is more gender fluid and not trans because flame doesn't live 24 seven as a woman at home flame dresses more masculine or gender neutral with her children. She has three kids. And I actually think that it's important that we recognize Flame's experience because it is a very unique experience. And kind of outside of the Breakfast Club interview, Flame is one of the very few people who can really break down gender, sexuality, and identity, and also discuss politics in a way that I haven't seen anyone else do. She has lived and seen the world from the male lens, from the black lens, from also the lens of a woman. And so I find that absolutely fascinating. And so I do think that the heat surrounding her will eventually die down. But I am curious if Flame will continue to identify as trans or identify as gender fluid because I really see her more as gender fluid. And hearing Billy D. Williams and how people really thought that he was gender fluid made me think about Flame. Flame is, 2020 is gonna be Flame's year. Like she has a lot of major projects that she is working on. And I will continue to follow her projects and career. But also in the headlines, there was a story about a high school student in Georgia who transitioned from female to male. And his school refused to let him use the male bathroom and so I believe during this um, kind of like battle, the school put or um, they were able to create gender, gender neutral bathrooms and they only wanted this particular student to use gender neutral bathrooms. And so this particular court case went to the courts and I don't, I can't remember um, the level that it went to, but whatever level it went to, the court ruled in the trans students favor. It went to the appeal court and the particular appeal court that it went to, it oversees Georgia, Florida, and Alabama. And so the 
decision that will be made in this particular case will also impact these other states. And so in Georgia, before the decision of this appeal court, there was a town hall meeting in Georgia where parents were trying to plead to the city council to not pass any resolutions to allow transgender students to use bathrooms according to their gender identity. And so I'm not sure there have been a lot of bathroom bills that have been introduced, I feel like, in the past four years. And it's really troubling to me. And and, and a, real, a handful of these bills have been with high school and college students. And looking at these particular students... If you look at them, they are, they have transitioned and actually all, all of these particular students are male. So if you look at these male students, but you want them to go to female bathrooms It just looks very odd. I I can't remember um, this, but um, the the trans high school student's name. He looks like a biological male, and so it it I don't know. It would just look very odd for this male to go to the bathroom with females. And so I really hope that the appeal court rules in the decision of the trans male. It is so difficult to transition high school age because of all of the pressures that peers experience at that age and so it would be so validating for him to be able to use the male bathroom and not have to think twice about it and not only not think twice about it but not be harmed by the children of one of these angry parents And so fortunately, this trans high school student, I believe he has graduated high school and is in college now. But I really want these bathroom bills to die in 2019. In 2020, I hope we don't see any more of these. Um, I do believe that the idea it's even weird to say, I, I do believe that kind of more people are really understanding trans issues. And because of there are more transgender people coming out in the media, that it is easier for cisgender straight people to embrace trans people. I just learned that Kim Petrus was transgender. I had no idea. And so I really want to see a trans renaissance and to have more transgender public um, officials, public uh, people in the people in the public eye come out. You know, trans models, trans spokespersons, trans actors, trans entertainers 
to really come out of hiding and to really embrace their trans identity and show who they are to the world. With the, the gay community, the les lesbian community, we have so many people in the public eye that it is easier for the straight community to embrace gays and lesbians. Bisexuals are kind of like less prominent, uh, but they still are accepted. And so I hope that more gay and lesbian publications really highlight and feature trans individuals because it it only helps and i will keep following the the bathroom bill story um the court should decide on it sometime soon uh but i i do hope the court rules in the favor of of the student because it is the right thing to do and Fortunately, a lot of schools and public institutions are replacing gendered bathrooms with gender neutral bathrooms. It's a step in the right direction, but there will always be gendered restrooms. And so until there's a complete end of gendered restrooms, I don't, I really don't want to see any more bathroom bills uh, because it's, it's really unfortunate. Um, I couldn't imagine being forced, if I was a transgender individual, to be forced to use the bathroom of my gender that was assigned at my birth especially if you are passable like that would that would completely mess me up if i am a passable female who is trans but i have to use the men's restroom like that just doesn't make sense and so watching this video let me know your thoughts in the comment section. I am excited that I just set up my Patreon account. And so you can see a link at the bottom. So if you want to support me on Patreon, you can. I'm going to actually start uploading videos on Patreon this weekend. Um, I haven't done so as of yet. I meant to do it when I actually uh, activated the account, but I haven't done it as of yet. And also I uh, linked my uh, Venmo uh, user name. So if you want to drop me some money in Venmo, I am really trying to get new camera equipment so I can do more with my channel. And you guys have the power to do that if you want to contribute. And so I want to get new camera equipment because I want to introduce new content and um, new web series on my account. And so if you can, please contribute. Um, and I can't wait for 2020. I'm kind of nervous about the new year, uh, but I can't wait for 2020 to see how it will shape this particular channel. Um, I have a lot of ideas that I would love to share with you guys, but I definitely need more equipment. But I am also saving up money to get equipment. Uh, so I'm looking forward to doing more collaborations in 2020. And uh, hopefully Roberto will come back on. Um, he's been MIA because he's been working um, but he and I went to Tucson together about three weeks ago and we had an amazing time. Um, he 
works for a hotel chain. It's more of a boutique. And so this particular hotel boutique has a property in Tucson. So we had the hookup. The property is absolutely gorgeous. And it was so good to get away from the city. Um, Tucson is the desert. And it is incredible to see undeveloped land for miles and miles and miles. We saw Trevor Noah one night. He had a comedy show. I am a tourist wherever I go. So I had us running around downtown taking pictures of murals. And we discovered this really cool art installation that's permanent. It's called Bike Church. If any of you go to Tucson, you have to find the Bike Church. It is a chapel dedicated to cyclists who have lost their lives. And it is made entirely out of bicycle parts. And it has a solar panel so that it lights up at night. It is absolutely beautiful. Um, I hope to get married there one day um, or get engaged there. All of my friends are getting married out of the country. My favorite cousin is getting married in Italy in a year. Um, I can't wait for that. And... It's, I'm going to record every moment of it and post it for you guys. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited about the, the new year and what it will bring. And also, if you haven't, please like and share this video. And to also support me, you can purchase a copy of my book, A Love Like Blood. The link is also in the pinned comment so stay tuned for more content besos Mwah.